happy Monday morning, and we are back with another Realtor Spotlight, and we are here with the lovely Bobby Russwinkle. Bobby, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me today. You're welcome. So Bobby's with Remax Seven Shores, and we have a little bit of different side. Typically, we're in a home, and we're kind of looking around, that kind of stuff, but Bobby represents more on the buyer side, and so we want to sit down this morning and kind of share some insight about um, about the buyer side. So, or and then how, you know, us as people that are gonna sell their home, kind of what people are looking for. But before we get there, I want everyone to kind of learn a little bit about you sure. and kind of where your realtor life started, your journey, and how you got to where you are. Absolutely, so my name's Bobby Rustwinkel and I work at Remax Southern Shores and I'm on the Ryan Chorus team. So as the Ingle part of the team, I'm strictly a buyer's agent which is fabulous because I get to give all of my attention to the buyers. Mm -hmm. I don't have any connect ties to a property um, to take them one way or the other, but it's really nice to give all of my energy into the buyers to making sure I know what their wants and their needs are mm -hmm. and then being able to do all the research and answer their questions. My husband says real estate is a great career for me because people pay me to meddle in their business <laughs> um, and solve their problems. So. Um, it's a lot of fun to get to know my clients and build a really trusting relationship with them. Mm -hmm. So I've been with the Ryan Corus team as an agent for about two years. And then prior to that, I actually did community relations and marketing with Three Maps Up and Shore. So I've been a familiar face in the real estate industry right. for quite some time. Yeah. 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 So, one, well, I can attest that. I mean, Bobby's a good friend of mine, and you know, kind of being one that you are always caring about, you know, your friends, and you know, which I'm sure any buyer that comes on quickly became a friend of yours, and you want to like get them into the right home. Right. Yes. yes. No. It, it's been a it's been a true pleasure being able to really get to know my clients and understand their lifestyle mm -hmm. because having a home that fits your lifestyle and your needs is so important. Yeah. It's not just about the structure and the architect and the aesthetics of it, but is this house and this property gonna play into the yeah. lifestyle that you desire to have. Your quality of life is so important in today's right. season. So. Well, and you know, trying now, I think people have probably adjusted what they're looking for these days. Absolutely. I mean, are you, maybe you didn't think you needed a home office, and now you do. Maybe you didn't think you need that secondary living space to throw the kids up into. <laughs> right. Or, you know, have a spot for you to go work, and your husband to go work, and your kids to do their homework. So I think kind of the needs have adjusted. Yeah, and it's, you know, kind of getting into the meat and potatoes of the conversation. When you talk about what are buyers looking for, it varies. Everybody's right. lifestyle is different. Everybody's needs and wants are different. But typically, I try to ask my buyers, what are the must-haves? What are things that are non-negotiable? Mm -hmm. And then what are the things that would be nice, but that you could compromise on or maybe change down the road? Because right. we all know that properties, you can edit them and change them to meet yeah. your needs. But, you know, it's typically how many bedrooms do you have to right. have? Do you need the garage? Um, what type of geographical location yeah, is important. important. And so those are things that we usually try to put the base foundation, and then of course budget. Yeah. It's always important to get qualified, <laughs> get a lender that you trust, yeah. know what your means are, um, that way you're looking at things that are tangible, right. and you know what's actually out there to fit your budget. And then there's the, um, the wants. Yeah. And those are the things, they want the big backyard, they want the open floor plan. And as you said, home offices, um, flex space is huge right now. So maybe you have that formal dining room that you've been using as a formal dining room, but the next buyer may see that as a home office or a playroom right. or a classroom. Yeah. So making sure that these flex spaces and bonus rooms can be utilized for different methods, is, yeah. it's been really big these days. Yeah. What are, like, can you give us like a few things that, I mean, maybe are turnoffs to buyers these days? Yes. Or so, anything that you walk in, you're like, ooh, I definitely can't do this. I spend a lot of time walking in a lot of homes. It's challenging as a realtor because I want to buy all the houses. <laughs> um, but it is, it is things, consistently we see that peak interest, or consistently that we see that deter people from even, it could be the perfect property, but it's, it's, it's nicked from the list because of a few things. Um, overall, neatness and cleanliness yeah. is very important. Um, if you're still living in the home, keep it tidy. Mm -hmm. If you've moved out of the home, you know, pay a little bit of money to have a deep clean done. Because right. people walk in and that first impression is so important. Which is crazy because you you try to, I'm sure you try to like get them to look past some of that. Like look at the bones of the home and people always say that like, you know, maybe if you have wild red carpet and, you know, bright blue walls. People have a hard time looking past that, and not everybody is equipped to walk into somewhere and put in that little extra effort. That no, extra some work. people want turnkey, and some people are, they're very visual persons, so they can't see past what's in front of them. And I try to coach them through that. It's my job as an agent to see the value of the home and, and teach them and educate them on that. 
but then you've got some people, they know exactly what they want if they don't see it right away. So those are just some tips. Um, take the personalization out of it. If you have photos in, of your wedding day and your children and your family all over, um, sometimes people get distracted by that and it becomes an emotional situation and they want to know the stories and they, they, they don't care about the house anymore, but they're focused on what's, what's yeah. happened in the past, not where they could see their right. future. Um, so I think it's important to turn your home into a product because right. okay. you're not selling the home, you're selling the house. Right. And so in that process, the, the buyers don't want to buy your home. They want to buy a house that they can create there. So if you can make it a blank canvas and make it a product that somebody would want to purchase, mm -hmm. I think that's really great advice for any sellers yeah. to, to take your memories and emotion out of it and make it a canvas that a buyer could see putting themselves in. Yeah, I love that advice. And I was just going to, that's what's going to lead us into another question is kind of what can people do to just kind of, you know, touch up their home. So you said, obviously, let's, you know, get a deep clean let's get you know even just a regular you know cleaning lady to come in or a company just to kind of do an overall clean absolutely then, you know, there's so many out there right now that'll even help you declutter pack right. up some of those things like you don't know like oh can I leave this out but if I take that frame away does it make it look empty you know you're, you still want it to look you know like livable, livable. staged yeah. but not staged right yeah yes. it's a fine line and that's where I say lean on your agent if you have a good listing agent they're gonna help coach you through that mm -hmm. um, curbscape outside clean up your yard a lot of times especially now with social distancing if we have a list of 20 properties that the buyers are interested in I'll have them drive through I'll create a treasure map and I'm like go tour these properties get a feel for the neighborhood look at the curbscaping and sometimes the houses are eliminated just from that initial drive-by oh. because it wasn't maintained or the neighborhood didn't fit, but sometimes that curb appeal, like yeah. this home is so attractive. We really like the way that it looks, the yard is so maintained, and it, it may still not be the right home, but it gets them through the front door. So make sure that your home is welcoming from the street view. Make sure that the lawn is manicured, um, that it just has that welcoming presence to invite people in. And then of course, in the home, you know, declutter, make it simple, mm -hmm. keep it clean, um, and don't, don't try to make it something it's not because yeah. the further down the line we get through the process, if things are uncovered because the seller tried to hide them or max them, it's only going to be a headache for everybody yeah. involved. So um, highlight the positive features. If you have this gorgeous brick fireplace and that's been something that you've loved about the home, then, then focus on that. Don't right. try to cover it up. Um, and so I think those are just intangible things that yeah. sellers could do to yeah. be true blue what the house is yeah. for the, the next people. Well, I feel like, I mean, you touched on that, like curbs gave them like a quick pressure wash can make all the difference in the world. If you're viewing it, like, you know, just the pressure wash the drive through, a pressure wash, I mean, you can write pressure washers, you can, right. you know, have someone come out and do it if you are not capable of it. But that kind of just shows like if you've taken care of the outside, you know that the inside is taken care of for the most part. Yeah, know? people like to see a home that's been maintained. They feel like if it shows well and it looks very taken care of, then they can imagine there's probably less issues with the home because the mm -hmm. people have been there to maintain it. And it's a big purchase, and you don't want to walk in and then a month down the road find out other things, and you're like, oh, I wish I would have realized this, or I wish I would have saw that. What about maybe that last walkthrough? What are some things that like you're looking at that last walk? I mean, right you, before home closes. Yeah. So a lot of times the final walkthrough, um, it depends on what's been decided upon in the contract. If they've agreed to leave the window treatments and the blinds, then we want to walk through and make sure that those window treatments and blinds are there. Same with appliances and furnishings. If anything is being sold with the home, it's okay. a chance to make sure that those things are there. Right. Typically, anything major, structural issues or mechanical issues, have been discovered mm -hmm. through the inspection or previously along the way. So that final walkthrough is really just to make sure that the home is being conveyed to the purchaser as planned and there's no surprises. Yeah. Um, and so we, we get that when you're moving out, there might be a chance that you're gonna nick a wall of furniture or things right. like that. And I think it's, again, our job as real estate agents to set those expectations for the buyers as to what that final walkthrough is. Yeah, for sure. So. Well, that's great. Yeah. Well, these are all, I mean, have been amazing, you know, opportunities for people to know what to do mm -hmm. in their home prior to selling. And then as buyers coming on, you know, what they should be looking for. Yeah. As a buyer, I think the best things you can do is, is know what your budget is, get pre-approved since you're looking at homes that are actually <laughs> options, check out Revolution Mortgage. They'll tell you where you can be. If it's a condo that you're looking for, always know that you're going to have those HOA fees to consider as well. 
Know the geographic location. Some people are like, I don't care where I live. I just wanted to be 15 minutes from the beach. So that's basically our entire county, right. you know? And so at that point, that's where um, it, it focuses in, okay, what does your ideal home look like? And try to think about those things that no matter where you're at, you can't change that. Yeah. But there are a lot of things within a home you can change. And yeah. so that's where I'm like, you know what? Let's find this and then it, all the other little things we can change along the way. Yeah. So. And we know someone that can change some of those things. We do. <laughs> So, so it's been so great. So I want to thank Bobby for kind of sharing some of her insight with us today. And why don't you let them all know how they can get in touch with you if they're looking to buy? Because I know that there's a lot of people. Maybe we still need a home for Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. If you'd like to take a tour of some of the properties that are available here in the Myrtle Beach area, I'd be happy to help you. I have the heart of the teacher, so my job is to make sure you have all of your questions answered. And when you're ready to buy, you have the information to make that decision. So you can contact me at 843-267-0744 or Bobby sells the beach at gmail.com and that's B O B B E I. Yes. And you can also check out our website. It's bobby.ryancorosteam.com. So we are Ryan Corus Team with Remax Southern Shores and we can't wait to meet you and help you find your dream home. Yeah. So fantastic. Well, thank you so much and we're going to see you again for another edition of Realtor Spotlight and this afternoon you can check back in with us because we'll have a great revolution around town coming at you. You guys have a great afternoon. Thank you.